Let's install some bats. Twenty two percent of heat from an average uninsulated home is lost through the walls. So anyone living in one of those sixties to nineties classic New Zealand houses, you know what I'm talking about. This video is all about where heat is lost in your home and some of the things we'll incorporate into your new build to stop that heat loss or at least slow that heat loss down. Let's rip into it. So step one to keeping the heat in is insulation. What's insulation? It's that stuff that goes in the walls. So you got the inside of your wall, you've got the outside of your wall, and we put some stuff in the middle of that to slow that heat down. Yeah, let's rip into it. Let's install some bats. Fun times. I'm definitely not an insulation expert, but what I do know about insulation is it's all about creating and slowing down the transfer of heat. Uh, you might see this insulation here, uh, pink bats is probably what most New Zealanders know insulation as. So first thing to note that is a fiberglass product and that's not the only fiberglass product. Uh, another common one on the market is Bradford Gold, that's the yellow product that we use on some homes. There's also some other products coming out like earth wool. So there's a bunch of different eco products as well. Basically there's a lot of options. Uh, believe it or not, I've only used polyester on one house. The price of the polyester product compared to the fiberglass product is about double. And the fiberglass products have come a long way in their time. There used to be a big issue with slumping. So in the wall, the product would slowly slump over time and they've changed the recipe, basically, how they build the bats up, and that has theoretically improved the slump. Slump equals bad. Yeah, no slump equals for the win. That's the big drive with polyester, is that it's more rigid. Like I say, I've only used it on one house. I'm, I'm definitely not an expert on it, and the reason we used it on that house is because the owner of that house had done their research and that was important to them. I looked at doing it on my house and we looked at using a mammoth product. And why do you reckon we should go for polyester? Carbon Zero Factory, made from recycled PET plastic bottles. Zero waste, throw that back in the machine and reuse it. And particularly the friction fit products, they are self-supporting, solid, pretty robust compared to the other products you'd use in the market, I guess. Again, it was one of those things where the cost and the benefit, like it was a large cost, was literally double. I actually talk about this in an old video about cost versus benefit. My wife's been doing paint samples. We're definitely not using this color so I can draw on it. So if you have on one side of the curve, you have performance, and on this side of the curve, you have cost. There's an entry point on the curve and then it goes up. But I believe that you get to a point up here, well, it's probably not flat, but the gains for the cost, the cost starts to go up hugely, but the gains that are, are only marginal. So you wanna be looking like, how do I sit in this sweet spot here on the curve where I am getting the best bang for buck in terms of my upgrades. It's gonna cost more than the minimum, but how do I get the best bang for buck before you reach this point on the curve of diminishing returns where you're starting to sink thousands of dollars and you're only incrementally improving your uh, thermal efficiency. Like, don't get me wrong, you should upgrade your insulation. You should make your house better thermally. You'll commonly hear our values like R2.2, R2.6, R4. And then you'll hear people in North America talking about R values and they're like R20. How we measure an R value here in New Zealand and how you would measure an R value in North America are different. I'll include a link down below um, for a conversion chart. The other thing to remember is in North America, I lived in Canada for a year. We went from plus 30 in summer to negative 30 in winter. The kind of insulation they're gonna need over there is totally different to the kind of insulation you're gonna need in New Zealand. Like I know Queenstown will get to like minus six, kind of minus 10 territory. So one of the ways to tackle that is that the New Zealand building code breaks up New Zealand into three climate zones. Zone three is pretty much the South Island. In Okuni, basically think snow, zone three. And then zone two is everywhere in the North Island just below Auckland. Think about the level three 
lockdown cutoff. <laughs> no, because we shouldn't say that because there is um, in two weeks no one will know what the heck we mean. Think about everything south of Auckland, pretty much. Zone one is above Auckland, zone two is below Auckland, apart from the snow areas, and then zone three is the South Island. Easy. They have got minimums for each zone. Now the minimums shouldn't be like a target to aim for, they should be something to rise above. So another thing to remember is that the size or thickness of your wall determines how thick of a bat you can get in there. Traditional New Zealand building is a 90 mil timber frame. The maximum size fiberglass product you could get in a 90 mil frame is a 2.8 product. What I have found is that 2.6 is the best bang for buck an equivalent thermal efficiency you could do a 4x2 frame and then you could crisscross and use 2x2 to do another layer of bats on the inside. If you do your first layer of bats this way and your second layer of bats this way, some people would argue you're creating a better thermal bridge because you're covering all those gaps where the wood is. Yeah, what is the R rating of a stud? I mean, like not a stud like me, like a real stud. Let's talk about windows. So you've insulated the roof and you've insulated the walls, but you've also designed a modern house that's got this big glass everywhere. So glass is like this and your walls like this, of course, it's going to transfer the heat faster. There's a couple of ways where you will lose heat on your windows. Not only will you lose it through the glass, or conversely, your home will warm up too fast via the glass, so it'll make the house too hot in summer. Remember, insulation is not just about keeping your house warm in winter, but it's about keeping it cool in summer. Uh, I think that's a big thing that people need to remember is, you know, so you've got to design your house so that it warms up and it stays warm, but you also want to think about at least four months of the year that that north facing sun is beating down into your room and you want to kind of minimize that a little bit. So there's two things you can do to the glass, three things. First up, use double glazing for sure. Triple glazing is still not really taken off here in New Zealand and a lot of triple glazing comes from overseas. I've got a few friends on jobs doing triple glazing right now and it's literally with the COVID delays has been held up for months. While I get the benefit of triple glazing, it's kind of not mainstream enough yet to have all of like ironed out all of those supply chain issues here in New Zealand. So we stick to double glazing and we use aluminium. Again, uh, I know PVC is a big up and coming option and people over in Europe and North America can't believe that we still use aluminium. But again, that's what our system and our model is set up on. I personally get the benefits of PVC and a number of our clients uh, recently have asked about PVC. But then when we've looked into it for them and showed them the options and gone through it, most of them have decided to go back to aluminium and include a thermal break. So aluminium is a really good conductor of heat. That means heat passes through it really fast. So you've got your wall and you've got your window and then in between you've got this tiny little bit of aluminium connecting the two and so that tiny little strip of aluminium is where you will lose heat because it's a really fast efficient conductor of heat. And so what you can do is put a thermal break. A thermal break is where you've got the outside aluminium and the inside aluminium and you've got a strip, I, I believe it's a strip of rubber, between the two. And what that does is it gives the heat a bit of a barrier to stop the heat going out to the outside. The other thing you can do is you can put a low E max film on your windows and you can also put a gas inside the double glazing. We strongly recommend you do both of those things straight off the bat. I did that on my house. Personally, I didn't include a thermal break on my house and in hindsight, it's probably one of the things I wish I had included. The problem is that you get to the pointy end of the budget where you could upgrade literally a hundred things and when it's gonna cost a couple of grand to thermal break and you don't see a direct immediate benefit, it's one of those things that kind of gets dropped off. So one thing I've noticed without the thermal break, you'll notice even in a brand new house, you'll still get a little bit of condensation only on the aluminium framing and it's not like puddles like an old house. The reason you get condensation in an old 1960s weatherboard house is you've got this really thin pane of glass and you've got all this cold air outside and you've got all this hot, warm and humid air inside and then the humid air hits the window and because the window is cold from the cold air outside, straight away condenses condensation, turning that hot 
wet air inside into a liquid on your window pane. So double glazing stops that on the glass for the most part. Just remember, just because you've got insulation, you're not going to stop heat loss. What you're gonna do is slow it down and that's why in the thick of winter, if the air outside is zero degrees, you may still get a tiny bit of condensation on your rooms. But there's also some things we can do to stop that such as air movement. I think what you're seeing is insulation is not just about what you put in the walls, but it's the total picture. What's in the design of the house and is the house north facing? And then it's what's in the walls and what's in the roof, but it's also about like your heating, your heating source and then ventilation. So what I'm hoping is that by putting these videos together and giving them to you, first and foremost, if you're one of my clients, it's for you to educate you on insulation and R values and thermal breaks and double glazing and what's important. Uh, but if you're not one of my clients, I still hope this educates you and helps you through your new build journey. Yeah, so the, I mean, the whole idea of these videos is whether you're building with JK or not, it's helping you make the right decision for you and your new build. Thank you.